All right, so as continuing this refined color, the refined paint, you can kind of see what I'm doing on top of my base color. It's still chunky, but what I'm getting is more nuanced color variations between, because I do not like digital paintings that you can just see the pixels very clearly, right? So this is giving you kind of opacity roughly over the top. I'm still doing this with a pretty big brush so I can work pretty fast and at a pretty high opacity, but no longer 100% opacity. So being at 70% allows me to start kind of mixing this. And remember my, my uh, brush presets help with the mixing of the different colors together. And you can see I'm kind of crisscrossing across her forehead, but more and more I'm trying to match the angle of the reference, right? So it's it's kind of like I'm modeling it in three-dimensional space, like kind of working across it. So her the angle of her wrinkles is kind of the direction that I'm moving the paint and putting down my strokes. Now the first thing I'll do with refined paint is just kind of pick an area. So I, I chose her forehead to kind of work up and try to figure out what level of finish do I want for the painting. I, I know I want it to look better than any of these AI examples. I don't want it to be like chunky and, and blocky like AI sees Van Gogh. I'm inspired by this finish, which is way simpler, right? Kind of flatter shapes. But I still want it to look like Ruth Bader Ginsburg and not like a cartoon version. So I'm experimenting with here with drawing from my own colors and just kind of layering over them at 70% opacity and deciding how much of my brush strokes I really want to have show. Personally, I don't see the point in doing kind of photorealistic digital painting because I think photographers should have jobs too. But you can see the level of, of time and commitment that takes. You know, it's definitely a way to practice your technique. But to be too much of a slave to your photo reference really just limits what you can bring to the art yourself. And so this forehead is starting to get there a little bit. And then I'll show you some tools that people like so that it doesn't look so sharp edged, right? Since the one thing you can't do with a custom brush is set hardness, you can make a soft edged brush, but I'd rather make a harder edged brush like I did and then soften the edges with different tools. And I'll show you how. And in my digital portraits, I'm trying to go for character more than vanity, right? I'm not trying to make it look really beautiful. I'm trying to look at, make it look a little bit more engaged textured and interesting and that's that's where kind of personal aesthetics matter for what you want and i usually use people that have been that are deceased but people that are very influential in their character not just their appearance So your paint style can kind of bring all of that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yeah, digital painting is just a big playground where you can layer it up as much as you want and push and pull colors. So I try to keep it pretty similar to traditional painting, but then take advantage of the digital where I can, like where you can do color shifts on your different layers and see what you like better. And the point of the refined painting layer isn't to match the colors that are in your base layer, it's to do something different over the top of them that will mix optically and visually with the color underneath, right? So like I said, I didn't need to worry so much about color on the base color because my refined paint, which looks like this, blends in with it and starts to overtake it. I, can, I also like my harder edge brush for refined paint because I can kind of sculpt in details like the lower eyelid, get that highlight. And I've created just hundreds of variations on skin tone now just by layering up at 70% opacity these different colors even though I'm going to be putting glasses over the top of them eventually. So now I'll allow myself to carve in the eye. But I never want to get too stuck in detail, right? So one way to do that is to use a new window we haven't used before, and it's called Navigator. So you go to Window Navigator. It's a tool that's in the corner like this. But why it's useful in digital painting is it will show you the whole picture. So you can see I've refined the forehead, starting to get into this eye. But there's still whole chunks of this that really need work. And so, so instead of getting stuck on the details that are lots of fun, before I get sucked into that for a half an hour, I should address these areas that need more work you know, without zooming in so much. So that's that's some of the danger. What were you going to say, Hyde? That is nice, yeah. So to turn it on in Photoshop or in Photop, it's just under Windows and it's the Navigator because it gives you the, the whole image no matter how zoomed in you are. You can also use it very quickly to just kind of drag around though I prefer the, the space bar for that. And I'm still using a pretty large brush. It's over 100 pixels in dimension because I'm trying to work general to specific. So I'm not trying to get too detailed yet. I'm just trying to get a little bit more modeling and a little bit more nuance and blending to the color. And no painting should just be super, super detailed everywhere or your viewer doesn't know what, what's important to look at but everything should feel finished and intentional. So you don't want to, the navigator kind of keeps you from just forgetting whole areas of the painting or just leaving them till the end, which can often happen. I'll also, I have kind of a hard rule for myself. I never allow myself to zoom in more than 200%. Because right? anything more than 200% is just kind of a waste of time anyway. So I'll show you what I mean. Like if I'm working on the eye and I'm trying to clean it up and I zoom in 200%, that's plenty big, right? But I can still see that in the printout. But if I zoom in more than that, now I'm at 300% and I'm like taking my brush down to like four pixels at a time and I'm like noodling in here. Yep. That's not ever going to show up in the print. So it might make me kind of feel satisfied, like I'll oh, here I'll put some little texture in the pupil. Yeah.
but it's not going to affect what people actually see. So I never let myself go more than 200%. And mostly I try to keep out to around 30%, 20%, so I can tackle everything. And that requires a big brush. As you get more and more refined with your painting, your opacity keeps going lower and lower, so it mixes more and more. Your brush tip size might get smaller and smaller. And don't forget to throw in some wild color every once in a while. A lot of digital painters will make their own palette off to the side, so as they find a color that's really helpful, they'll just scribble it off to the side like this. A lot of you already know how to find your own palettes. So these are kind of the interesting primaries, you know, that I'm working with. But then it can be fun to have something stronger in there as well. And you want to stay really loose. There's no one paint stroke that's going to make or break your painting. Not one color choice. So it's like being a, a boxer that's hard to hit. You just keep changing, keep moving around, keep building. And that's going to kind of reveal your own aesthetics to your own preferences for the work. Now, when Photopea, because it is freeware and it is browser-based, when it has starts to lag on you a little bit, save your work. Make sure you've given it a name. Make sure you know where it's saving to. All right. It's in my assignment four folder. It's right here. And then you can close Photopea. You can close any other tabs you have open. You can close any programs you don't need running. I'm going to keep Chrome and Preview open. And then you open Photopea again. You can even quit Chrome and restart it to kind of clear the cache memory. And then that will clear kind of your histories and should make it so your brush can keep up with you again. But you will have to get your brush back. And mine didn't save, which is strange. So let me show you how you can do that, because I didn't save my brush the last time. So this will be a nice review of making a custom brush. It doesn't take long. You say File New. You set it to be 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. And this time I'll give it a name. So I will call this FA23-2 Carl Custom Brush. That's just going to be the name of the file. On a white background. I'm going to use their, their chunky marker brush. I'm going to make it pressure sensitive for size. Here we go. And I'm just going to scribble. Scribble, scribble, scribble. It's a nice brush, their chunky marker one. But you just learn a lot by defining your own. 